In this video, we're going to learn how to resize an array using C. So first off, we can't really resize what's called a statically allocated array. So for example, if we declare an int type array called array of length 10, this type of array is called a statically allocated array or sometimes a static array. This array will always have a length of 10. We can store 10 int values into this array and that's it. This type of array is stored in a place in memory called the stack, and we just can't change the size of this array. So for example, later on, we can't change this array to have a length of 20. Sometimes we have situations where a program needs to handle some varying amount of data, and exactly how much data the program needs to handle is determined as the program is running. So maybe as the program is running, it determines that it needs to work with 100 int values, or maybe it determines that it needs to work with 200 int values. But we can't really resize an array like this as the program is running. Now, one thing we could do to get around this is to declare this array to have the maximum possible length that could be required based on the problem that we're solving. So maybe the problem that we're solving might require 100 int values, or maybe 200 int values but we know the maximum possible number of int values that the program could require is 1000. So if we just declare this array to have a length of 1000, then our program can handle the maximum possible problem size. And maybe as a practical matter, our program will only use 100 int values. In that case, we would have 900 unused indexes in this array. And maybe we're just okay with having that unused memory. If we're going to do this, we may want to separate the concepts of the capacity of the array from the length or the size of the array. So for example, we could say this array has a capacity of 1000 because the array can store 1000 int values total at maximum. We could even declare an int type variable called capacity to keep track of this capacity. And we could have logic in our program to make sure we don't exceed this capacity. So if we exceed the capacity, then we do something like output an error message or something. We could also have the concept of the length or the size of the array, where the length or the size of the array would be the number of int values in the array that the program is actually working with. So maybe at runtime, the program determines that it actually needs to work with 200 int values. So maybe as a practical matter, our program is only going to use the first 200 indexes of this array we could declare an int type variable to keep track of this length. And this length could be determined at runtime based on user input or whatever else. And then we could program logic based on this length. So for example, if we wanna have a for loop access each element in this array that we're actually using, we could have a counter variable i go from zero up until, but not including length, by one with each loop iteration. So here, this for loop is going to access and somehow do something with every element in the array that we're actually using from the index zero up until, but not including the index length. So if we're only using 200 elements in the array, length will be set to 200. And this for loop here would only access the first 200 elements in the array. And if later on in our program's execution, it determines that it actually needs to work with more or less int values, we could always change length to reflect this. So this would be one approach to getting around the fact that we can't change the size of a statically allocated array. Now there is another type of array in C called a dynamically allocated array or a dynamic array. We have to use dynamic memory allocation to work with this kind of array. To do this, we'll have to include the stdlib.h library and use functions like malloc, calloc, free, and realloc. So for example, we can call malloc to allocate a block of memory. So here, if we call malloc and pass it 32, what this will do is allocate a block of memory that's 32 bytes in size. So we can store 32 bytes worth of data in this block of memory, and this block of memory is not on the stack it's in a different place in memory called the heap. If we want a block of memory that's large enough to store 10 int values, what we could do is pass 10 times the size of an int to malloc, where this size of operator is going to give us the size in bytes that it takes to store an int value, and we'll multiply that by 10, and we'll pass that to malloc. 
So malloc is going to allocate enough bytes in memory to store 10 int values. Now what malloc is going to return is what's called a pointer. It's going to return the memory address for this block of memory. We can store that into what's called a pointer variable, where a pointer variable stores a memory address. We can declare a pointer variable here called data with int star data, and we'll assign the memory address returned by malloc to this variable. Where this star here means this variable is a pointer, we've called the variable data, and this int here means it's a pointer to an int value. So at this memory address, we're expecting an int value. Now we can actually access data like an array. So we could have data at the index zero is equal to four, and data at the index one is equal to five, and data at the index two is equal to six. And here we're using what's called array notation to set the first three elements in the array at the indexes zero, one, and two to the values four, five, and six. Let's actually change this array to have a length of three. We'll actually keep track of the length of the array using an int type variable called length, which will assign the value three. And then here we'll have length times the size of an int. So now this array can store three int values total. We could also output these values using a loop. So we'll create a for loop with a counter variable i that's going to begin at the index zero, the index of the first element in the array. And we'll increment i by one with each loop iteration. So i goes through each index in the array and we'll stop the loop once i is no longer less than length because that would tell us we've gone past the end of the array. And what we'll do with each loop iteration is output the value in the array at the index i. So in the loop body here, we'll call printf. And what we'll output is data at the index and we'll have percent %d here to output an int value is equal to, and then percent %d to output the value, followed by backslash n for a new line. And we'll output here the index i and the value at that index using data at the index i. Now when using dynamically allocated memory, we need to free the memory once we're done working with it. Otherwise we have what's called a memory leak. We free the memory so the program could potentially use it again. So down here we'll have free data and this will free the block of memory. So if we save compile and run the program, we'll get the elements in our array here, four, five, and six. Now with dynamically allocated arrays, we can actually reallocate those arrays and make the arrays bigger or smaller we can use the realloc function to do this. So let's say that at some point, as a program is running, it determines that it now needs to store five int values into the array. We could call realloc to reallocate the block of memory. What we'll do is increase length by two because we want the new length of our array to be five. Then we'll call realloc and we'll first pass it the pointer to the block of memory that we're going to reallocate. Then we'll pass it the size for the reallocated block of memory. So we'll have length, times the size of an int, where length is now five because we added two to length. Now realloc is going to return a pointer, in other words, a memory address to a block of memory that's now this size. Now, when we called realloc, we had data pointing to this array here where we have the values four, five, and six. So somewhere in memory, we have four, five, and six stored contiguously one after the other. And data is pointing to this array. And this array is at some location in memory and data is storing the memory address of that location. Now it's possible that next to this data here, we have unused memory. In that case, what realloc can do is just expand the existing block of memory. And so in this case, realloc can just return the same memory address that data was storing originally. It's also possible that these places in memory are being used. And in this case, realloc can't just make the existing block of memory bigger. What realloc will do instead is find some other address in memory where there is enough space. And it's going to return this address now, this pointer. What it will also do is copy our data to the address. So at this address, we'll have four, five, and six, and we'll have two more ints worth of space we can use. And it's undefined as to exactly what values are going to be stored at these indexes it could be zero, but it could be something else too. We don't know. So here, when we call realloc, it's going to reallocate memory like this and return the pointer to that block of memory. And we can store the memory address returned by realloc into data. That way, before and after calling this function, data is going to point to the block of memory for this array. Then we'll set the two new elements in the array. We'll have here data at the index three is equal to seven and data at the index four is equal to eight. 
Then if we save compile and run the program, we'll now see our array has five elements. We have four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we could also make the array smaller. We could have here length minus equals one. And what this will do is actually reallocate the block of memory to be smaller. We'll delete these assignments here. And now if we save compile and run the program, we have the two elements in our array four and five. So this is how we can use realloc to resize a dynamically allocated array. Now, one thing I should mention is that what we're doing here could cause a memory leak because realloc could fail to allocate a larger block of memory. In that case, it's going to return the value null where null is basically a pointer to nothing. In that case, the memory address that data was storing would be overwritten with null and we would then lose access to this block of memory and we have no way to free it and no way to use it. So what I'll do is post a link in the video description to a video which covers the topic of safely handling realloc failure. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.